So perfect. Welcome. Um, welcome to our Move the Mind uh, event that we are going to have today. Um, as you know, Move the Mind has the aim to empower for mental well-being through sport. And uh, today we have the pleasure uh, to have an absolutely excellent interview guest uh, with us, namely, which is uh, Gergely Kiss. And uh, Gergely Kiss uh, speaks to us from Hungary. Uh, he is or has been at least a, a top, top athlete in water polo. Uh, I've just mentioned three times Olympic champion, uh, which only very, very few people have reached, something like this. Uh, so welcome, Gage. Um, maybe you can introduce yourself briefly um, to our audience. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the invitation and the possibility. Yes, I am from Hungary, from Budapest, uh, and you know, uh, water polo is my sport. Uh, this is the oldest uh, team sport in the history of the Olympic Games. It was earlier uh, on the program uh, than uh, uh, soccer and basketball. Uh, so it has uh, 120 years of history in the Olympic Games, uh, water polo. And uh, from the 20s, uh, Hungary became a traditional country of, of being a successful uh, country in this sport. And I am from the center of Budapest. Uh, I grew up there. And in my neighborhood, there were two Olympic champions of water polo. So uh, as I was a tall guy, I was a left-handed boy. Uh, I love the water and I became a water polo player very easily and I fell in love in this sport uh, quickly. And uh, from the age of 14, my career was going up, up in a very incredible way. Uh, I played always with bigger guys, with uh, older uh, teams. And at the age of 15, I could play in the first professional league. It's like the Premier League of, of English soccer or Bundesliga of, of German. And age of 15, I just played with the best players in, in Hungary and in the world. And uh, from the age of 16, I could participate to the Olympic team uh, trainings every summer, uh, where, where I improved a lot. Uh, so my career was very quickly uh, going forward. And at the age of 23 uh, in Sydney, we won the first Olympics. And uh, of the 21st century, we won the, the first three Olympic Games with my super, super extra talented uh, generation. Um, six of us won three gold medals and other players two or one. And one, I am one of these Hall of Fame players uh, in the international swimming sport from Hungary. Um, and uh, after my career, I was building up uh, another career, like uh, being a spokesman of a sports organization, being a sports manager of a water polo club, and uh, doing um, uh, motivational speeches to companies, to, to schools, non-profit uh, uh, schools and, and business companies. So I'm quite busy, but I'm super happy to, to promote sport and to promote a healthy way of thinking uh, for the people, especially in Hungary, where we have very bad percentage of active uh, um, Hungarians. Uh, I think like 60% of the Hungarians, they don't do sport, only 40. And uh, I, I am one of the guys who want to change this way of thinking in Hungary. A man of sports, uh, truly a man of sports, I would say, very successful. Um, Gege, you've been um, known as uh, having also not a lot, uh, having a lot of talent, but not only having a lot of talent, uh, but also a very strong will. So in, in some of the finals, uh, you've been actually the one uh, who has also brought in uh, your your mental power and ability in, in this. Um, so this is a little bit where my first question um, is going to relate to, uh, because Gage, for you as a top level athlete, uh, does your mental well-being have an impact on your performance or did it have an impact on your performance? I am, I am the 
the player, I'm the athlete of of uh, of performance. I was always uh, looking for the very hard situations. I didn't like the easy uh, victories. I didn't like the the opponents to to crash, like to to kill them. Okay, if we could win uh, several times, like by 20 goals or 15 goals, we were trying to do as a a, a, a correct athlete has to do always the, the best. Uh, if I can win against you by 10 goals, I have to show my abilities. That's uh, one meaning of my respect. I show respect to you that I am not playing with you like a cat with a mouse, but I do my best. If it means that I'm crashing you and I'm winning by a lot of goals, then I have to do that. That is my respect to you because I don't, I take you seriously. If, if the the level, um, the difference of our, our abilities are big, the level difference is big, then I will win. And if you are better, then you will win by maybe by 10 goals. And I didn't like those moments when I saw the weaker team to suffer under my my better team's uh, power. Uh, I liked uh, the tight games when I had to decide the game. I was that guy. I, I, I really appreciated to do to give an assist in the last seconds and, and my teammates scores a winning goal and we are happy together. Uh, that was my uh, my power, let's say. So I was always uh, looking for these very difficult moments in trainings from Monday to Friday to be able uh, to do my best on Saturdays on the league games or during a competition where sometimes we had eight days, eight games. It's not like soccer where uh, you have every third or fourth day a game in the World Cup. When um, the... Mm, uh, let's say the older times when I was young, we had eight days, eight games. Every day you you went after game for dinner and then the next morning you were preparing just the next game in the next afternoon. So it was very, uh, very difficult physically and mentally also. But I loved those weeks uh, to, to, to be prepared, to, to concentrate, to work hard. So I think your your mental power was was quite uh, was quite strong. Um, however, we also know that um, you've been talking about this ribbon like uh, eight days, eight um, um, yeah, eight competition or or eight games in a row, and and these tight situations they can also be uh, kind of exhausting uh, also for for you mentally. Um, are or have uh, training and competition been there more a resource or more a burden for your mental well-being? So did you gain something out of it or was it more uh, taking something from you? I had very often that feeling that like a uh, German troop or uh, Viking troop or uh, uh, ancient Roman troop uh, going for a war, after every battle, I became stronger and, and more experienced and I was learning from my uh, faults and my mistakes. And uh, I think it helped me. I think uh, I, 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 I've stepped out uh, from every competition uh, as a stronger, as a more, uh, as a happier athlete. Like. OK, I, I was suffering in the training. I was suffering during the game. I had my aims, my goals. Uh, maybe I succeed, maybe I failed. But uh, if I failed, I learned a lot. If I succeed, I learned a lot the same. And the next day I want to be better. And that was my way to, to improve my abilities, my, uh, my mental strengths also. So more the empowerment part. Yes. Um, Talking about this empowerment, um, I know that you've been greatly influenced by probably not only one, but by more of your coaches. Uh, I've been reading uh, that uh, Dennis uh, Kemeny, that he was uh, quite an inspiration uh, for you. So what do you think can a sports coach do to help you maintain your mental well-being despite the pressure of the uh, competitive sports? I think uh, if we are 
talking about quality athletes, uh, individual sports or team sports, if if you think that your athletes are uh, high quality uh, athletes, uh, they know their task, they know their technical um, components of their way of playing, way of competing. And in the national team for the Olympic Games, of course, your national team uh, in high level like Italy, Serbia, Croatia, Spain, Greece, Hungary, you think that you have high quality players and the coach, uh, I think it's a big mistake if the coach wants to teach you the game, the water polo. No, we have to understand the game. We have to know maybe some small pieces of a puzzle a coach can give in this high level. I mean, in the Olympic level. But uh, on the other hand, the coach has to be able to maintain a good mental uh, well-being, of course, at the team, uh, individual players, like me as a right-wing player, I have to feel myself comfortable, uh, self-confident, uh, willing to win, willing to fight for the teammates and all the team together in the changing room, on the bus, on the plane, during the training. We have to be as a family, as a friends, group of friends uh, who are going for for a beer fest together. Uh, we have to behave like that. If If it's coming from inside, it's good for the coach because he has to add only a small part. If it's not coming from the heart of the players, of the athletes, then the coach has to give more and find a way not to be so soft, not to be so hard, but to try to find a way every day. It's a different day. Maybe my team is now so down, so I have to give them a bit of power, maybe a bit aggressively as a way of uh, coaching. And the other day, I, I see that they are working very hard, very, very hard. So I'm OK with this. I have to be a bit more soft to give them an extra free time or some jokes. Or So the coach has to find every day the key of the team, the key of the, the athletes. This is my opinion. I think that that is very crucial in our program. We also uh, we talk a lot about um, positive coaching approaches, uh, that kind of positivity you've been also mentioning, uh, that kind of empowerment part next to the part of certainly training physically, training for and towards the game. Um, now, uh, Gerge, we, we come from the world of sports uh, and sometimes maybe we feel that this is very natural. Um, so maybe you would also have a friend uh, who is not from this world of sport. Uh, why would you advise this friend um, who is not active in competitive sports uh, to exercise or to be physically active to strengthen their mental well-being? Yeah, I would say to my friend, uh, listen, uh, doing a sport weekly uh, as, a, as an everyday routine, you became more fit physically. That's how you will have more uh, relationship in your private life also because your outlook is nice. That's just one part, okay? But as a person, as a, as a partner in a, in a work, in a job, uh, you became uh, more effective. You became... Um, more as a teammate during your work, your projects. You know how to be precise. And if your boss asks you to do something, you will do that because sports teaches you that 10 kilometers of running is 10 kilometers. It's not nine, not eight. If you have uh, one hour training, it won't be 52 minutes. It is one hour. If you start the training with your coach at eight o'clock, it's not 8 10 or 8 11 it's eight o'clock uh, and a lot of a lot of my friends they do sports in the morning and they go to work with smile because they just did something great they just defeat themselves like they won against themselves uh, by by uh, doing 80 kilometers of bicycle or gym or running or swimming and some of the lazy workers, colleagues, they wake up at eight o'clock, lazy, coffee, 
breakfast nine o'clock like um, I have to work um, I'm tired and they go nine o'clock my friends after sports and smiling and very very fit and full of energy and let's start the work so it's 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 a much much different uh, way of thinking yeah I also feel it uh, it gives you a lot of empowerment um, and at the same time also um, if you if you are stressed, uh, then certainly we know sports is also very good uh, as a stress reliever. You also you have this kind of community. Um, if you meet your team, it can also give you a lot of uh, holding uh, environment uh, with it. Um, so if your friend would look then out where to go, um, what should your friend look out for when deciding on a sports program to strengthen uh, their mental well-being in addition to this physical aspect? Um, what, what should they look out for? I think uh, doing a sport, especially if it's a team sport, as you said, uh, a good team becomes, your, of course, your family. Like some, Sometimes I, I had that feeling that my teammates are more important than my cousins or, or my other relatives. And uh, I was thinking of them during a day, even on holiday. Uh, we were sending each other jokes, messages, uh, questions, helping as, uh, as civil persons. So I think uh, sports give you not only physical or mental uh, advantages and uh, and positive energies, but way much, way more, more, more. As a person, as a part of a community, a part of a group, uh, of a federation, of a club, of a team, different levels, I think it gives you something that that a human being is really needs. Uh, and 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 I think it's it's it's. Mm, one of the basic things of, of life, of, of enjoying life, uh, to, to be a part of a good group. That is very nice. Uh, a lot of experiences that we also hear from other people. Um, coaches, they play a very important role, certainly uh, in sports, in uh, motivating, empowering um, their participants. Um, now with our Move the Mind program, we want to support coaches, especially at um, participation level. Um, to integrate these aspects of mental well-being also in their day-to-day -day training routines with their participants. Uh, what do you think, uh, what expectations uh, should a participant in these trainings have towards the sports coach who implements such a program when it comes to mental well-being aspects? I think uh, that the coach is, is mistaken if uh, he or she thinks that uh, everyday routine can become a way of coaching. Like uh, every day is a different day. Every day your athlete is feeling differently. One day is better, one day is worse. I have some family tragedy, I have some happiness, I am tired, I am fit. I am willing to work. I I don't feel like working. I have pain in my on my uh, uh, back, on my shoulder. Blah blah blah. Uh, a lot of a uh, lot of things can change. Uh, can be changed every day. So a coach has to reflect on these changes. And and I think it's also a big mistake if a coach thinks that after five or ten years of experience, I'm just a very experienced coach. I don't have to improve. Especially today, every week, every month, there are new um, studies coming out, there are new way of thinking uh, from different continents, different countries, different uh, styles of, of that sports. Uh, if you see soccer or basketball or other sports, Asian, American, European style uh, studies, uh, new coach uh, uh, methods are coming out. So I think that changing every day and, and, and learning every day and changing your way of coaching is not OK. OK, you cannot change yourself every day, but but being on the same track and not changing for 10 years, nothing. It's I think it's a huge mistake and you are against your athletes. 
So my advice is, uh, and, and I think it's important to, to, to reflect on every day and to, to communicate with your uh, athletes. They are your colleagues. They are the, the fruits of your work. If uh, you don't respect them, if you don't uh, look for them uh, every day, you, you won't be a good coach, never. Uh, this is my very hard and very strong, but I think a very important opinion. I think um, many of us, we are agreeing to this positive communication, um, really positive coaching approaches, um, individualizing, adapting. Uh, that's also something which we are actually mentioning in our program. Gage, um, it was a real pleasure talking to you, uh, getting that kind of insight both from your uh, professional career, but uh, I know that you also uh, are still very, very much involved in sports. Um, so I know that you're carrying further all your positive spirit and uh, many thanks for your time. And uh, I hope to speak to you soon again. Thank you very much. And I wish you good uh, luck and a lot of success. Thank you very much. See you Thank soon. You. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye bye.